Dear comrades and friends, CPM and Red Star has decided to have an All India political campaign against RSS neo fascism with effect from December 6, 2022 to December 25. The immediate contest of this All India campaign, political campaign and political struggle is the emerging, the intensifying with its all its manifestations, the intensifying RSS neo fascism in India. As we know, after the coming to power of Modi in the second time, that is under Modi 2, there has been a, an all out offensive against the all the oppressed people, the Dalits, the minorities, the women, and uh, crony capitalism is also advancing. And uh, we know that after Modi's coming in 19, uh, 2019, immediately what he did was to uh, abrogate, to abolish Article 370. That is about uh, that uh, the special status of Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir is being taken away, and Kashmir is being broken up into pieces, and uh, there was a forcible integration also into the Indian Union. And uh, we also know that Modi himself uh, led the puja uh, to for the foundation ceremony of Ram Temple, the place in which. Babri Masjid was situated. So after the demolition of Babri Masjid, the very same place, this Babri Masjid, this uh, Ram Temple is being uh, built up. This is going on. And uh, we know that there were this uh, CAA, uh, this offensive, denying citizenship rights to Muslims. And a whole set of programs were there. Nowadays, we know that there are another offensive that uh, the economic reservation in the name of reservation to economically weaker sections the caste based reservation that was there since the foundation of the constitution now today instead of that in the name of economic reservation we know that the reservation was installed to as a an atonement for the historical injustices done against the oppressed caste in India, who were considered as subhuman by the Maniwadi Hindutva ideology. Now, in the name of economic reservation, the whole upper caste were given an additional 10% in addition to the situation where they are already controlling the lion share of the educational administrative force in India. So without any strategies, without any evidence, he said that he, uh, Modi regime has instituted this and a constitutional amendment was for and the Supreme Court in spite of a split verdict has uh, given endorsement for it. Now, October last week, in what is called a Chindan Shibar, Amit Shah which is called by, which was called by Amit Shah, Home Minister Chindan Shibir, there another decision has been taken, that uh, it is decided to, to open NIA office in all states, to superimpose a pan-Indian policing on all over India, in, in gross violation of the federal rights of the states. And uh, the new educational policy we know, NEP 2020, so in that, uh, through that, the uh, Sanskritization process is going on, Sopranization process, superimposing Hindi on non-Hindi states and uh, uh, against the uh, reality that India, which is composed of a, which is a multinational, multilingual, multicultural, multi-religious, multi-ethnic India, instead of that, through a various a whole set of policies, Modi is superimposing a majority in Hindu Rashtra 
in conformity with the RSS agenda. And above all, we know that now uniform civil code in, in, in the ongoing in the uh, elections to the Imajal and the coming election in Gujarat. Many other questions were uh, built, uh, taken up. Uniform civil code that is in, uh, attacking the Muslims and uh, uh, many other minority sections. Because we know that in the present situation a uniform civil code is a majority in agenda. So all these things are there. So now, uh, in, uh, uh, while these, these, all these are uh, created to, for a Hindu, Hindu to a polarization, polarizing the society with a view to facilitate uh, the, what is called uh, serving corporate capital. Now we know that Adani is becoming number three or number one in global billionaires uh, list and uh, uh, the, the, the Indian wealth, the whole wealth of India is concentrated in a few corporate hands and the vast majority of the people are being driven to poverty, to the peripheries of society. India is becoming a citadel of poverty by, as measured by, as uh, now characterized by international agencies. Migrants, their number is increasing. Displacement from agriculture because corporatization of agriculture is advancing. So there is an all-out offensive. Now public sector enterprises are rolled out to corporate companies. National resources are, natural resources are plundered uh, without any let-up. So corporates are advancing. Policy decisions are made in corporate boardrooms. And parliament is kept as a mere edifice. So, this is a very serious situation in our country today. And uh, it is to cover up these crony capitalists. It is to cover up the policies which are favoring the corporates that this regime is now uh, advancing the Hindutva agenda in a more intensified way. And we know that RSS now, which is controlling the through BJP its political tool, of course. BJP need not be its political alone, need not be its political tool. As Mohan Bhagavad has already stated, RSS is capable to make use of any political party. For example, Kajiwal is now competing with the BJP to become in the good books of RSS. He is the pioneer in, in putting forward now uh, this what is called a uniform civil code and other questions, which I need not explain. So now many, even the, even the so-called left forces, even the so-called CPM, they are also advancing the economic reservation agenda. We know that they were the uh, pioneers in formulating this economic agenda when the Bandar Commission was uh, uh, came there. So many, this, there is a widespread, among the political spectrum, there is the mainstream political parties are either silent or are spectators or are part of this agenda. So now RSS taking advantage of this depoliticized situation, now they are the biggest, the longest running fascist organization in the world is having its biggest offensive. And uh, it is moving, it is entering into, it is, it is now entered into a mad rush towards Hindu Rashtra uh, by the next election 2024. And by 2025, their agenda is to move towards us, where minorities like Muslims will be having, uh, they, they will be like second class citizens. They will be stigmatized and uh, Dalits will be subjected to Manismurdi. And uh, Manismurdi is becoming the ideology of Hindutva fascism today, RSS neo fascism. It is in this context that the Central Committee of CPIM Alert Star that met in, uh, in the first week of November 2022 has decided to uh, uh, call a nationwide uh, an All India political campaign against neo fascism including its all manifestations. We appeal to all progressive democratic forces and all like-minded forces joining with all like-minded forces, all peasants, working class, all uh, uh, anti-caste sections, youths, students, and all concerned sections. We are now moving towards a pan-Indian offensive against this RSS neo-fascism. And uh, 
that date that december 6 we know is a demolition day of babri masjid babri masjid was demolished in, in on december 6 similarly it is the death anniversary of dr ambakar the architect of indian constitution now december 25 is the day when ambakar burned the manismriti the ideological basis of manivadi hindutva rss neo fascism so from december 6 to december 25 cpm rashtar is having a nationwide all india campaign political campaign all state committees are now taking their own programs depending on the country situation in that in those states so i i request all uh, comrades all party committees to come forward to make this all india campaign a success and we request to all uh, democratic forces all progressive sections all those who are siding with the oppressed and the working class the peasants to unite with this campaign and uh, come forward rally round to make it this campaign a, a big success. Let's salute comrades.